What's going on, Vault Dwellers? Top Ranking New back at it again with another video for Fallout 76. Today I'm going to be bringing you a new build video, but this isn't going to be your typical build. I'm not talking about melee, range, anything like that. Today I'm going to be showing you my mule build. More specifically on this character, he's more of my weapon mule. Uh, these mule builds have worked out so well that I actually started a second mule build uh, during the double XP weekend, so I'm still developing that one. I'm going to be showing you uh, what I do in order to make sure that my carry weight's up there and that I can just haul as much stuff as humanly possible on this additional character. But hey, if you guys want to check out some other cool Fallout 76 gear, make sure you head on over to U4GM. They got a lot of cool in-game items, so I'm going to be putting their link down in the description along with a coupon code that's going to be saving you 5%. Be sure to check that out. With all that being said, let's go ahead and check out the build for this mule. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so if you've ever seen me in game, you've probably seen this character somewhere nearby, just kind of taking up space or seemingly not doing anything because I do drag him around the wastelands quite often. And his sole purpose is really to just carry all of my other junk. If we pull up my inventory here, you can see that I have no shortage of just random uh, legendary items is the biggest thing I've been collecting here. I got lots and lots of these between weapons and, uh, of course, armor. Not only that, but this guy inevitably ends up starting to collect, like, a lot of aid items as well, which is why I actually started a second character, because I want to keep my aid items and my weapons separate, just because I'm getting way too much stuff. What can I say? I'm a hoarder. Not only that, but if you go over to the ammunition, I'm also hoarding quite a bit of ammo as well. Now, if you look down here, you can actually see that right now I'm carrying 508 pounds uh, and I still got room to go. I got almost another 60 pounds to go. And that is just because of my build. If I uh, took off my perk cards and everything, that would change real quick. Let me first start off by just talking about the excavator power armor, because I think most of us are familiar with this. If not, well, you know, always time to learn. First and foremost, if you have a full set of excavator power armor, you're going to get a carry, uh, carry weight bonus. You're going to get an extra 100 pounds. But on top of that, I also have have the um oh calibrated i almost forgot the name of them calibrated shocks on each leg uh and that's a must have uh because it's going to increase your carry weight by an additional 100 pounds so already your carry weight's up by 200 pounds there's my calibrated shocks. Now, these calibrated shocks, uh, if you don't have the plans for them, they're really easy to get. You can actually buy these off of the vendor down at the um the Camden Park here, so south of the Nuka-Cola plant. They're a pretty penny. They're like 1,800 caps, depending on your charisma. They're, they're a little expensive, but well worth it. Now, thirdly, though, when it comes to excavator power armor, is a pretty well-known glitch that Bethesda hasn't really seemed to care too much about. If you log into the game whilst wearing your excavator power armor, you're going to get an extra 100 pounds of carry weight. Now, that's not a permanent extra 100 pounds. It's going to go away the second you either get out of your power armor or that you get killed. And you're not going to get it back on that server. Even getting back into your excavator power armor, it's not going to bring back that extra 100 pounds. So this is like a, a light carry weight glitch. It hasn't had any effect on the server's stabilities at all. And I think that's why Bethesda hasn't really bothered with it. Uh, not only that, but if you're an avid excavator power armor user, you've been doing this glitch whether you knew about it or not. And so for that reason, reason I don't feel bad about sharing that particular glitch but let's just take a quick look and see how that works here you can see I got 560 carry weight right now if I get out of this guy and get back into this guy you're gonna see that carry weight now be reduced by a hundred pounds because I logged into the server whilst wearing this uh, power armor set so now I should actually be over encumbered let's take a look 465 so that carry weight glitch you know, it, like I said, if you die or you get out of your excavator power armor, it's gone. Usually you want to stay below that weight limit. It's a good glitch to know about in the event that you find yourself over encumbered and you don't have anything you're willing to get rid of. Uh, you can make your way back to either a camp or a vendor somewhere to sell that stuff off at. But like right now, I'm just over encumbered. Now, I recommend utilizing uh, the excavator power armor, even though that's a glitch there. I tried to get out and now it just disappeared and I can't move. Why is that figure? 
All right, and now I'm back. I had to log out and log right back in. Power Armor's been acting weird for me ever since Meat Week took place. Getting out of it's been a little glitchy. Um, but nonetheless, uh, the Excavator Power Armor is a must-have for a good mule build. Uh, thanks to the Purveyor, there hasn't been a shortage of being able to get... Um, armor that has certain carry weight aspects to it so ammo carry weight reduced weapons carry weight um that's easy to come by now that the purveyor he passes that stuff out ridiculously but as you can see here i mean i got i got a lot of different carry weight um junk carry weight mostly i've been using ammo or weapon and ammo carry weight which makes sense because as you take a look into my inventory uh, that's mostly what's bogging me down is ammo and weapons. So those two armors where you can reduce that carry weight's good, but it just doesn't quite add up to the value of the excavator power armor. You can see here that I'm out of my power armor, and even though I got all of this armor on that reduces my weapons and ammo, uh, I'm still 420 pounds. So I'm I'm like 150 pounds over encumbered that's a lot so the the armor with the reduced carry weight isn't going to be nearly as helpful as just a good old-fashioned set of excavator power armor on top of that you can actually craft excavator power armor for level 25 characters which means if you're grinding a mule you only have to grind them to about level 25 before you start to see real value out of having this character by level 25 you're going to have access to quite a bit of the perk cards you need not all of them but quite a bit Plus, you're going to have access to that excavator power armor where you can put on the calibrated shocks and just have them stay logged into that excavator power armor for that extra carry weight. So even though uh, these um, these different armor pieces that have different weight reductions are handy, they're just no replacement for the excavator power armor. Even uh, if you were to go and get that possum backpack, I mean, yours still doesn't quite come close. Now, before we get into the perk cards, because you're not going to be surprised by the majority of the perk cards that I have, let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about um, mutations. There we go. I almost forgot the word there. There's not really a lot of mutations that you really have to have for this character. Um, I would definitely recommend herb mentality. Herd mentality, not herb. Herd mentality. The reason being is because you get more special points. So plus three specials if you're in a group, uh, minus two specials if you're solo. Because this is my um, my mule, he's not designed for combat, or in this case she. She's not designed for combat at all. Uh, it's all about getting extra carry weight. So those three specials, the most special I'm interested in is the strength. Uh, an extra three, that's going to give me a little bit extra carry weight capacity. Other than that, I did Empath because, again, I'm always on a team, and what this means is that my team members are actually going to be taking less damage. So it has nothing to do with being a mule, but it's just a nice side effect. And Marsupial, because jumping high is always a benefit, but you also get plus 25 carry weight on that. Now, there's other uh, there's other mutations that you could focus on as well, but this is just not a combat-related character. Uh, my, my main two that I would highly recommend is that Herb Mentality, and marsupial is a good one to have as well all right now let's talk perk cards and as i said most of these are probably not going to surprise you because you're a mule all you're really doing is focusing on uh strength uh, i also have charisma so that i can share perk cards as an added bonus of being on a team uh, but aside from that let's take a look at our perk cards so I do have Traveling Pharmacy. As I mentioned, I do plan on creating a build that's exclusive to my aid item, so I'll eventually be able to take this one off and replace it. You're not going to be able to uh, equip all of the different carry weight uh, perk cards all at one time. Bare Arms is a must-have uh, as soon as you can get it, uh, because heavy weapons are called heavy weapons for a reason. They're heavy. Uh, if you were to put heavy weapons in your stash box, uh, the carry weight uh, bonuses that you have don't apply to whatever's in your stash box. So ultimately, you want to keep your heavy weapons on you at all times, since they're going to consume the most amount of weight. Never put heavy weapons in your stash box. Simply equip bare arms and you're good to go. On a side note of that, there is no perk card that's going to reduce the weight of your rifles. So if you find yourself having rifles in your inventory, you might as well go 
ahead and put those in your stash box because the weight's going to be the same regardless if it's your stash box or your inventory. Next, of course, this one varies because I'm going to come back to that one in, in a moment. Sturdy frame. Uh, ban uh, bandolier. Now, I also have a bunch of ammo, a lot of ammo. Uh, and I'm going to take some of these perk cards off and I'm going to show you just exactly how much weight I truly am carrying. But the ammo weighs, uh, starts to weigh up quite a bit. So this is another must have. Ultimately, I mean, some of you might not be picking up ammo if you're a big melee build on your main character and you're just ignoring ammo, then you probably don't need that. But I personally, I hoard ammo like crazy because you never know when you're going to need it. To that matter, I also have Ordnance Ex Express. This is going to make your explosives way less. And that's not just your uh, grenades, but it's also going to be like your 40 millimeter rounds, uh, your missiles and your mini nukes. Uh, that adds up quite a bit. Again, if you're not using any of that ammo and you don't find yourself holding on to a bunch of it, you might not need this perk card, but I currently am hoarding a lot of it. And then, of course, your melee weapons. So this is martial artist. This makes sure your melee weapons weigh less and you have a faster swing speed. Obviously, I'm not doing a lot of damage on this character, so I'm more interested in the weight. Uh, but I do have other perk cards that I kind of switch between just depending on whatever's in my inventory at the moment. Obviously, I have Pack Rat. I try not to keep too much junk on this character because he's my weapons mule. Uh, I also have the shotgunner. Uh, or scatter shot. I guess it helps if I can read where my my um, shotguns weigh quite a bit less, 90% less. But if I don't have a lot of shotguns in my inventory, I won't uh, won't keep that one equipped. And then lastly, sturdy frame. Now because bandolier only requires two perk cards, I actually have a level one sturdy frame and a level two sturdy frame, and that's kind of important because if you have a uh, bandolier here obviously you're gonna only have one additional um, perk card to use I can't use the level two so that's why I do that I don't personally find myself typically having a lot of armor now is currently an exception to that and with meat week it was extremely easy to get a whole bunch of one star combat armor I had a bunch of armor there, so I did have my level two sturdy frame equipped. But I typically find myself carrying mostly weapons and ammo, and for that reason, I usually just do the level one sturdy frame, and that's good enough. Again, though, I will alternate between these perk cards just depending on what's in my inventory. Out of all of them, the one that I would say that you really want to make sure you have is this bare arms, again, because that's going to be the heaviest weapon and the biggest benefit. Um, I don't have any perk points spent in perception or endurance. Again, this is not a combat build at all. The only thing he's really designed to do is carry my extra stuff. Uh, charisma, again, I have 15 points spent in here because I'm always on a team and I want to be able to share level 5 perk cards. But as you can see, I don't even have all the like all 15 cards set up here so i actually need to purchase more charisma cards in order to get 15 worth but it's not a big deal it's just a minor setback not affecting the character at all getting into intelligence though i do have batteries included and this is another must have at level three it's going to reduce energy ammo by 90 percent now that might not seem like a big deal if you're um not using a lot of like the fusion cells and stuff like that but more importantly more important than the fusion cell um, weight reduction which it does obviously do there fusion cores are what really weighs this character down because I'm always in uh, power armor I try to have a surplus of fusion cores on this character at any one time a fusion core normally weighs three pounds and that's quite a bit if you have that perk card batteries included equipment brings that down to 0.3 makes a huge difference because at three pounds a piece, if you have 10 fusion cores, that's 30 pounds all by itself. In this case, I have um, 19, almost 20. It's almost 60 pounds just in fusion cores alone. Batteries included is really going to help you out. Because sometimes I have way more fusion cores than even this does. Uh, aside from that, uh, I do have gunsmith. And that has nothing to do with this build. That has to do more with the fact that I have 15 charisma. I can share gunsmith if I feel like sharing it. 
going to agility it's the same with adrenaline this is the one card i share the most with adrenaline that's five points right there it gives me extra extra damage on kills uh and that's the only reason why i have it i do recommend having at least a adrenaline gunsmith uh there's there's a few other five level five perk cards that you can share but adrenaline's my go-to uh but in sticking with agility i do have of course uh through hiker which is going to reduce the uh, the food and drinks is a must-have and then your pistol weight reduction because why not this is a mule i don't typically have a lot of pistols but if i do pick up pistols they weigh 75 percent less Lastly, here in Luck, I do have Starch Jeans because I showed you the mutations that I have active. Uh, that's a must-have. And I was using Serendipity for my other three points. Uh, and, and this is just like an extra three points where you can just kind of decide. I switched that up to Ricochet recently. Uh, and this is going to go back to the Power Armor and why it's important as well. Let me talk a little bit about that. So as I mentioned multiple times, this is not a damaged character. It's all about hauling stuff. With that being said, the reason why I like uh, the Ricochet perk card is the same reason why I like to use Power Armor. Uh, going back to the Excavator Power Armor, I don't just have calibrated shocks on there, but I also have a coiled Excavator Torso. So I do energy damage to any enemies that come and melee attack me. Ricochet kind of helps me do some damages to enemies from a distance. Now, the reason why it's nice to have a little bit of damage on this character is because I often take this tune with me two different events, especially the easier events. For example, Mama Dolce's. So what I'll do is I'll actually park this particular tune somewhere in the events and just leave them sit there for the most part. And then I'll actually do the main quest with my main tune. So basically he's doing a little bit of damage to anybody that attacks him. Also, he's getting experience points for completing the quests. And even though it doesn't seem like much, he also gets rewarded with all the small things that add up over time. Stem packs, purified water, rat away, things along them lines. Uh, which is why I said he, even though he's mostly a weapons tune, he inevitably ends up collecting different aid items. And so it's just a nice easy way to do damage to enemies passively without me putting a lot of focus on the mule and trying to keep him alive. He's just basically kind of out of the way. If he does damage, great. If he doesn't, not a big deal. Ultimately, by bringing them onto the missions as well, if my main character gets over encumbered with some of these rewards, I can just drop them off and have this mule pick them up right there. So again, he's not necessarily a damage dealer, but I like to have Ricochet and that... Um, coiled chess piece just so that they do some relatively passive damage without me doing any effort. Also, I have the um, Tesla rifle equipped just in case I do need to do a little bit of damage. I do more mass damage. So I'll do a little bit of damage with this character, but he's not designed really to kill something fast. Just basically do enough damage to where he gets XP for killing something. So ultimately, how effective is this build? This is the real question. I mean, I showed you some carry weight there. Uh, in this case, 565. I've gotten that above 600. But the carry weight itself isn't really what matters. It's the actual weight reduction. Let's see exactly how much weight I'm lugging around with me right now here. We'll just take off all of these perk cards. See exactly how over encumbered I just so happen to be here. I'm going to take out that. There we go. That should be all the weight reduction there. Let's see what we're left with. All right, so now we got all the perk cards off here. In fact, let's take off the armor too so we can see exactly, exactly how much weight we're dealing with here. The armor and the power armor don't stack. I'm sure most of us know that already here, but I'm just curious exactly how much weight we... I actually hit the max limit, so 1,776 1, pounds. I'm at max limit without any of this extra stuff here. 
So that's it. If you guys find yourself constantly hoarding all of these legendary weapons, maybe it's time for you to build yourself a, uh, a mule tune. Uh, I really started needing to do this ever since the purveyor came out because, you know, even junk legendaries are worth script. I find myself collecting a lot more legendaries that I could possibly turn in on a day-to-day -day basis because there's only 150 script that you can collect per character every day. Right now I'm collecting 150 on three different tunes. I could probably step that up to four um, just because of the amount of junk that I'm truly hoarding here. So I've become a true hoarder. Nonetheless, hopefully this video is informative, if not entertaining. If you got some sort of value out of it, consider giving it a thumbs up. Also, if you haven't done so already, smash that subscribe button and hit that bell. That way you'll be the first to be notified anytime I got new videos like this. Hey guys, I appreciate y'all watching today and we will see you all next time.